instructional video to go with the pattern available on Etsy for the close fit Euro style scrub hat with tie back bow. You can find the link below in the um, section that talks about the description of the cap. Um, this particular cap I designed with no elastic and no toggle. It's similar to my other cap with the video on here um, in that it's got the close fit front. Um, in the back, it has a tie back bow. And I designed it to be a little bit longer here to kind of hide those little stray hairs that like to hang out. It has um, a nice long tie so that you won't struggle so much in tying it. This particular cap I made out of two fat squares and two coordinating colors. And there's just an abundance of choices that you can pick for these. Um, you can use all the same color through here and just make the ties a different color. That looks really cute. Um, that's probably what I'm going to show you today with the fabric that I've chosen. Um, but there are all kinds of different choices. And um, fat squares are nice because um, they are relatively inexpensive. Um, they come in the perfect size for you to use. And um, you can, and there are all kinds of choices and they're available just about everywhere. Here's a couple fat squares. These are the ones I'm gonna to use today. Um, but they come in 18 by 21 or 18 by 22 at quarters. And the thing you wanna remember about these, the most important thing is to make sure you pre-wash them because they will shrink. Um, you can also baste along the side before you throw it in the wash. Just go ahead and run a basting stitch along the whole edge, all along there, and then it won't tend to ravel so much. Throw it in the dryer, and then you're going to want to iron it nice and smooth before you cut your pattern out. When you purchase your pattern on Etsy, you will get a link on your email to print out PDF files for the instructions, the pattern pieces, and pictures of the process of making the cap. Um, it'll include layout instructions for either fat square layout or if you want to use regular 44, 45 inch fabric, you'll need about a half a yard. It shows you how to lay that out as well. One note on the cap tail piece. Um, it takes up the entire 11 inch piece of paper. And so if these black lines don't print, like on this one, for example, the black line on the edges did not print. Just know that your pattern piece goes to the very edge on both ends. Okay, I have all my pattern pieces cut out now. The next step is to mark on your fabric all these little dots that you'll be using to reference later when you make your pleats. So I'm just going to take a piece of chalk and transfer, transfer these markings onto my fabric. And all you do to do that is just make these little lines. Wherever you see these dots, I'm gonna mark my center front. And then because I placed this fabric on a fold, I need to open it up. I'm going to flip my pattern piece over and fold up the bottom, match up my center front to my center front dot I made, and transfer these markings on this side of the fabric as well. So I end up with two, uh, four markings here, the center front marking, and four markings here. Then I'm also going to mark on the side these dots where I'm going to insert the tail. So you'll have dots here on the back side of this. You'll make two marks here. On the back piece, you'll do the same thing. You'll mark all your dots across here, your center back. Open up your pattern or open up your fabric. Turn your pattern piece over. Flip up the bottom, line up your center back, and mark these 
four dots. On your cap top, you have a notch here that you can either mark with chalk or you can notch with scissors. Just make a mark there and you're going to mark the other side as well. That'll be the center, front and back on your cap top. And on your tailpiece, you can mark these two arrows if you'd like to, just for reference. Next step is to take your cap tail, your two pieces that you've made, and fold them right sides together along the center line. See that fold line on your pattern piece? Just fold them on that center line, and you're going to press them nice and smooth right on that center line. I'm going to pin the edges together along the open end of the fabric here, along the raw edge. On both pieces of cap tail. And then I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam line along this edge here. I'm going to leave the wider end of the cap tail open and I'm going to sew all the way down a quarter inch and turn the corner here, nice straight corner, and sew a quarter inch here all the way to the end. I'm going to do that on both pieces. I've sewn a quarter inch along this whole length of my cap tail and across the shorter end and left this wider end open on both cap tails. Now the next step is to clip the curves. And for that, you simply take your uh, scissors and you clip here on the corner, just a slant. And then I'm going to go along the whole length and clip little Vs within the seam allowance. You want to make sure you don't cut into your seam that you've made, but you're going to go along the edge and every couple inches, you're going to make little V's along the whole side of your cap tail. This is so that when you turn the cap tail around to the right side, that you'll maintain more of the width of the tail. It won't be caught up in that bulk along your seam. You'll have a nice wide cap tail. So I've gone along the edge and made these little V's. Be very careful not to go into your seam line. Just like that, okay? Next step is to grade the seam allowance. And to do that, I'm just going to separate the raw edges here, the two layers, and I'm going to cut the top layer just a little bit shorter than the bottom layer. Okay, so it's just a little bit shorter than the bottom layer, and I'm going to do that all the way along here. That will also help to reduce the bulkiness along the seam line so that you can maintain the width of your cap tail when you turn it around. I have my cap tail here ready to turn. I've clipped all the curves here along the raw edge and graded the seam allowance all the way along. I'm going to simply take a shish kebab stick. I'm going to take the, the straight end of that, flat end, and I'm just going to turn my fabric here on the closed end of the tail. And I'm going to put my stick in the end, kind of grab a hold of that fabric, and just bring it out to the right side. And carefully go against the corners here, push them out with the flat end. Now you can, at this point, you can turn your stick over 
and use the pointy end, but just be really careful not to poke through the seam line as you're dealing with those corners. Okay, then I'm gonna pull this all the way back so it's right side out. I'm just gonna take my stick and go against that seam line and kind of press against it so I can get all the fabric out and maintain the width of my cap tail. And I have the measurements in the pattern so that you can compare how wide your cap tail ends up after you press it. So now I have my two cap tails and I'm going to go and press them and get them ready to put on my hat. I have my two cap tails. I've just pressed them and measured them, comparing them to the size printed in my pattern. And they are the same size and shape and width. And I'm just going to set them aside to be applied to my cap in just a little bit. Next step is to take your cap front A and cap back B pieces. And you're going to prepare them by taking the fabric and folding along a fold line here, one inch down along the raw edge. Now you're gonna use the edge that does not have the chalk lines. See this side has my chalk lines. I'm gonna to go to the other end, the other edge, and I'm going to press in one inch all the way down. And you're going to do that with the back piece as well. The unmarked edge, this is the marked edge, go to the other side and measure with a ruler one inch and press it down, all the way down the length of that piece. Okay, the next step is I'm going to open that fold back up that I just made and I'm going to zigzag along this long raw edge. If you have a serger, you can serge it just along the edge on both pieces, the front and the back piece. Open it up and zigzag along these edges. Okay, I've completed the zigzag along the edge of both my cap A front and cap B back pieces all the way down the long edge. Now I'm going to close that fold again and I'm going to just pin, pin it down along that fold line. And the same thing on the front. And then the seam that I'm going to make on both of these pieces is going to be three quarters of an inch from the, from the folded edge. And you want this seam to be nice and straight and even nice matching thread because this seam on the cap front is going to show across your forehead. So make sure you measure and make a nice straight seam. Okay, now that I have my front piece and my back piece prepared, I've sewn three quarters of an inch in along that fold line. I'm going to take the front piece and lay it down right side up with the fold towards me. This is the folded edge here. And I'm gonna take my two cap tails and I'm going to place them right here against 
this fold line where the bottom edge is even and the curved edge of that tail is on the top. Flat edge is on the bottom. I'm just going to match it up there. If you've made lines on your fabric, you can see the chalk line there. I'm just going to pin it together here. Make sure the bottoms are nice and even. Pin that together there. I'm going to take the other one and do the same thing on the other side. And then just to keep these tails from moving around while I'm working on them, I'm going to just take a pin and attach them right here with a pin so that they won't go moving around on me while I'm trying to apply these. Then I'm going to take these ends and I'm going to baste an eighth of an inch in. And a basting stitch is basically just a regular stitch on your machine, but it's, it's the widest stitch that you can adjust to on your machine. Okay, and I'm just going to baste an eighth of an inch in just to hold these tails in place. Now I have the edges basted in, and that simply will hold my tail pieces on there without pins so that I can apply the back to the front. So now I'm going to take my back piece, and I'm going to go right sides together. The fold line is on the bottom, the chalk lines are on the top. I'm going to just lay this down here, match up the fold line to the fold line, and I've got my tail sandwiched in the middle. I'm just going to line up these ends. And I'm going to pin them together. Right along here. Now, I will make a quarter inch seam line along this side all the way down. Okay, now you can see I've made a seam line a quarter of an inch along here, and I went ahead and zigzag finished the edge of it. If you have a serger, of course, you can use that. Then I'm going to take the other side, the open end on the right side, and I'm going to just match that up against the right side. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pin along the edge, matching up the bottoms, making sure they're nice and even, straight. And just pin along here. And again, once again, you have your tail piece sandwiched in between. It's not going to go anywhere because you basted it in and it's secure. Now I'm going to sew along here, quarter of an inch, and then finish my seam with a zigzag. Okay, now that I have my seam sewn, the front is sewn to the back, I'm going to press my seams towards the back the shorter piece of the fabric, okay? Press your seam on this side this way and your seam on this side this way, towards the back. Then after you finish that, you're going to turn your whole cap around to the front. Now remember I have the tails pinned at the front, okay? I'm going to locate the center front using my chalk line, and it's right here and I'm going to start making my pleats, okay? So starting here, I'm going to make eight pleats. I'm going to make four pleats going this direction and four pleats going this direction. So I start here at my center front. I'm going to take these two chalk lines I've made and I'm going to match them together. And I'm going to go in that direction, away from the center front and put a pin right there. 
And I'm gonna find the next two chalk lines, do the same thing, going away from the center. And I'm gonna find the third set of chalk lines, going away from the center. And my fourth set. Okay, so I have four pleats going that direction from center front. I'm going to go back to the center front and I'm going to go in the other direction and make four pleats. So I'm going to go this way towards the right second set of chalk lines here's my third set And my last one. And there's my chalk line for center back. So if you look at center front once again, you have four pleats going that direction and four pleats going this direction. And it looks just like that. Okay, I'm going to turn my cap back to right side in, okay? Wrong side out. I'm going to find my center front, and I'm going to take this circle piece, my cap top, I'm going to find my center front line that I made. I'm just going to match my center front with my center front and pin that together. Then I'm going to turn it around and match my center back chalk line with my center back, a single line here. and pin that together. I'm going to go back to the center front and I'm just going to go around here and just line the edges of the two pieces up together along that raw edge. And you just very simply go around and you match up the two raw edges and you want to keep your pleats in as you're going around make sure you keep your pleats in and just ease that material together and you can put as many pins as you need to in here as you're going around and when I get to this seam that I've made, I want to make sure that that's going towards the back. And I might put an extra pin in there just to hold that. Continue around, matching the edges and keeping your pleats in. If your circle piece and your cap, the length of your cap don't quite match up, you can ease the fabric in. And all that means is you make one of your pleats a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, okay, so that the fabric fits together. But now I'm at center back. 
I'm going to go back around to the front and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to just join these two pieces up along the raw edge. And simply follow the top of the fabric, the raw edges around, keeping my pleats in. and keeping the seams going towards the back. Putting my pleats in. And there I am at the end. So now you have your cap top and bottom together and pinned around. Okay, I'm going to turn my cap right side out just so you can see what the inside looks like when you have it all pinned together. So it's just like that. Now my next step is to go along the top of the cap and I'm going to make a seam 3 eighths of an inch wide around this whole top part of the cap. And then I am going to zigzag the raw edge all the way around to finish off the seam. If you have a serger, of course, you can search that. The most important thing to remember when you're sewing this seam along the top of the hat is that you want to keep these pieces, the two pieces, very flat and even while you're making this seam along the top. Otherwise, if you catch anything from the circle piece into the seam line, you're going to end up with a funny looking top on your hat. And so just make sure you keep these pieces very flat and even as you're going around. Okay, I've completed the seam around the top of the cap, 3 eighths of an inch all the way around. I've zigzagged the raw edge and trimmed off all the loose threads. So that's all that's left is to turn it right side out. I'm going to release the tails from the front and bring them around to the back. And there you have your completed cap.